The Outer Limits, 1963, The Borderland. Thunder crashes, vacuum start, cleaner starts, high pitched groaning, creaky man, there's nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to te- just the picture. We're controlling transmission. We will control the horizontal. We control the vertical. We can change the focus of soft blur, shoving it to crystal clarity. For the next hour, sit quietly. And we will control all you see and hear. You're about to participate in a great adventure. You're about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to the outer limits. Man, his name is Warren Edgar Morley. For six months he's guarded this gate from eight in the morning to six at night, at which time he was placed by another just like himself. These are the last few moments of his life. Stu, the kids aren't too friendly here. Let's not move in. Name, address, positive identification, reason for loitering. I'm Stuart Peters. Professor Stuart Peters. I'll be in work here tomorrow. You just drove across country, my brother and I. We haven't found a place to live, but the professor couldn't wait to get a look. OK, but look fast. Nobody's allowed to hang around here. Hey, have you got a cigarette? Yes, thanks. I didn't tell. I didn't say anything. Please don't. Don't, please. I didn't betray you. I didn't. I didn't. Miss Gabby Christian, you don't know me. You probably have a dinner date. But we have a mutual friend in Kingston, New NY, whose name is no importance. But he suggested I call you the moment I arrived in L.A. Harvey Miller, he went to school with your brother. Well, I'm not as young as I sound, Miss Christian. Anyway, I think I'll know. But only because I haven't met the right girl yet. Last, I must. I will be most happy to marry you, Miss Christian. If it turns out you're the right girl, you are marrying haste. Last, meanwhile, shall we repent to advance over a legendary dinner? All right, 8.30 at the Trevor's Rick Coffee House. You'll recognise me. I'll be wearing you on my in my heart. What did I know? Did you get these? Are they mine? You took them out of your pocket and threw them at me. They're not mine. Think hard. OK, I think hard. The guard gave them to me. Read them the inside. Don't come back. N-O-R-C-O. Doomed. I must... Been meant for you, Sven, since I'd rather marry Miss Christian be caught dead working a place like N O R C O. They treat everything like a magazine in a doctor's office. Yes, you know what's worrying me, Stu. No, Joy. What's worrying you, Miss Christian? I never told her my name. I no- told her my name. She's having dinner with a man she never met. I didn't rem- remind me to say my name. Listen, you mind if I stay out late? No. All right, sure, some brothers keep you are. One of the guards gave you this, Professor Peters Stewart, at, at one at the main gate. Miss Caesar, get me the main gate at once, please. He's not there today. Never mind, there's a new guard on duty today. We have a problem here at NORCO, Professor Peters. We are slaves to it. We accepted our, your application, the first in six months, uh, incidentally. Because we believe it will be one of the you, it will be one of you new fresh young physicists be able to help us with our problem. I'm very glad you did not take this message seriously. Well, I didn't didn't say that. Yet you are here, bright and early on the job, doomed or not. Well, you talk to the guard who was on duty yesterday, responding to our interests. You say you were not married, in not. And have no other pendants, right? Yet you come west by a. We were, I believe, you said to the younger brother, I don't plan to have him come along. I thought separating would be good for him, but he hates being on his own, so he dropped out of school. How old is he? 20. I couldn't refuse and make him stay. He has no parents or other relatives. He's given to practical joking. As a matter of fact, his humour is merely mature. Scary notes scribed and a ba- book of matches couldn't be wouldn't be stale. Are you to put to Professor? You are to put to Professor Lydon. Yes, sir, so I hear. Yes, arrange it myself. The professor could use someone with a fresh approach. Intercom buzzes. Yet, yes, Miss Doctor Brock. You bring in a new man, Professor Lyndon. 
You're my new collaborator, Professor Stuart Peters. I hope to be able to help you with your problem. I have been told we are slaves to a problem of grotesque proportions. No more than that. No more than that. Just enough to whet his appetite. Oh, I see. Welcome. Show him about a, a bit, Stephanie. Tell him the rules, strict rules. Don't sound so trick. They come out, come from your lips. Well, the strict rules don't sound so strict when they come from the lips of a beautiful woman. You want a desk? Shall I call you Professor Professor Linden? Is it? Is this all right? Yes, fine. Forgive me, Professor Peters. I've got him into the habit of not answering questions. Victim on more domination. We're just we're all getting used to dating computers to while answering for us. Yes, well, shall we get started? Professor Linden? Stephanie, Stephanie. Just about, just what is this grotesque problem? Dr. Block has misplaced sense of word value. It's not an ordinary problem. But is it, is, is it, is it grotesque either? Uh, no, merely insolvable. They're the, they're the kind I hope to specialise in when I grow up. We have said you are already created quite a stir at solving the insolvable. Now you fools at the foolish lord makers. Well, well, all but one nature. Perhaps because nature doesn't make foolish laws. So, well, I should show you around. Stephanie, problem? I have to find a way, break or change the conf- conversation of energy law. Oh, don't think we'll, we'll succeed. The law states that energy can be changed in form, but can either or be created or nor destroyed. We have to find a way to create it. it. Might be easier to destroy it. No, we tried. We can't. We have to get started now, Professor Stewart. Go ahead. I'll be with you for, in a moment, Stuart. Stephanie, Professor Linden. Stephanie, in speech of audible. Knock a door. Who is it? Woman, a witch. Let me in. I think I've been followed. Lars, hello, hello, hey. Are you mad at me? What for? Knocking on your door? No. Where you been all day? I was asleep all day. You know, I enjoyed dinner last night. I thought I would enjoy it again tonight, if if you were with me. Joey, you're, what's wrong? I didn't ever sleep during the day. I didn't ever sleep in the daytime. Did you sneak by in the desk just now? No, I walked by. The clerk was on the telephone. You didn't see you? Of course not. Clerks never see witches, I'm sorry. You're not in the mood for seductive humour? That means that... That means that just anyone could come to this door. Gabby, do you know what I think? Hmm. I think something more relevant is going on here. Relevant? I don't like that word. Well, I, when I came back this, here this morning after apartment hunting, I smelled something sweet, something deadly sweet. I had the feeling somebody was in this room. I just had to lie down. So, something deadly sweet. I slept until just a few minutes ago. When I was asleep, somebody cleaned up the room, the maid. No, not the maid. They said the maid didn't get here today. Your brother, don't think you'd come in about waking me, huh? Hey, I'm sorry, Lars. Well, last night you said I was the first guy who hadn't poured neuro- neurosis over you. Here I am doing just that. There's nothing neurotic about smelling something deadly sweet in the air. It's just plain spooky. They're not really, that's not really erotic, or, they're not really erotic, neurotic, are you? The summer, I was eight. I looked out of beach house window during a storm and watched our boat get thrashed against the rocks. My father was in it, so was my mother. Stu was away at school, and when he came back for the funeral, he asked me how he I can't, didn't, hadn't gone sailing with mum and dad. I told him the truth, that I had done something wrong and dad was punishing me. But I always had the feeling Stu meant I should have been in a boat with them. I stayed with Stu as much as I could can. I even dropped out of school to come here for him, with him. Any time I feel he doesn't mean that, at any time I feel he didn't doesn't mean that is when I'm with him. He looks at me with that nice smile. It took it took a long time. Some people are a long time dying. Stephanie, it's all right. You didn't seem interested in our problem. Size, yes. You must get over his repugnance for death, Stephanie. For you. For you to hate death is foolish, as for a live person to hate life. No, you should be grateful to me, Stephanie. Because of me, you've faced the most terrifying spirits of all, got it all, it all over with, and must now rise above bitterness. 
and try to enjoy the life I've given you. You, I, with the help of science, of course. Phone rings. The professor lied in here. Dr. Block, sorry to disturb you. There's a young man insisting his brother works here. A professor, Pete Peters. Doesn't seem to find his name in the directory. De- directory. I see, sure thing. Goodbye. He started today. His name not here. There. Can I see him? He went to the with a crew to inspect generators north of the valley. Well, then he'll be back, Dr. Brock. Said in a week, maybe more. Can I talk to Dr. Brock? You know what you ought to do? You and the lady ought to scoot down to the lane and go dancing. She's got nice legs. Girls with nice legs ought to go see seen her dance floor. Come on, Joe. Joel. Didn't mean anything improper. I wanted to talk to Dr. Brock. Get out. I don't want to start anything. We ring him and tell him I want to talk to him. Do you know? Now you know why a big man won't take on a little boy. Don't push me too hard. I don't like depending on these. Phone rings. Main gate. Yes, sir. He went away. No, sir. No trouble at all. I told him what he said. He just left. Good night, Dr. Brock. Walter running. Stu, I can't hear you come in. I didn't hear you come in. How are you, Joey? Don't look glad to see me. Stu, I've been worried. Taking care of yourself? It's almost a week now. Thought you'd call. I was involved in an experiment at the lab. Don't understand. I slept in it in the lab. Don't think I'd have worried. I told someone to call you. Didn't anyone call? No, I had no messages. I thought you went up north or something. Tub, tubs. We're gonna run over. Flow increases too. The creation of energy. According to natural law, can't be correctly destroyed. Only change your form. We're trying to break that law. We need more energy. We could legally or scientifically get our hands on. As time goes on, we'll be needing more and more. I warned you, you'll be interested. Understand? Girl Gabby, she thinks I ought to go back to school. So do I, Joey. She's out of her mind about me, naturally. I thought I'd try to enroll. You in first here, no, Joey. Go back to Kingston. Why? Well, it means my job. What? How's that, Stu? Well, the condition, no independence. I'm just your kid brother. I'm not dependent on you, aren't you? No, not so. Not so. Uh, not so as no one would know about. About. Well, I notice. Do you, Stu? Look, Joey. You're past the point where boys are quite to become men. I don't want you to lean on me any more. Make your own decisions. Gee, can I? Can't we be friends? I says, Joey. Yeah, no. Leave tomorrow day, Joey. I'm moving to the centre to anyway. I've got a girl there here, Stu. There's girls in Kingston. Not this one. There's one. There's one. One I knows. And independently wealthy lives. Loves me anyway. I'm independently wealthy. I can live at any place I please. Get out, Joey. Pack up and leave. What is it, Stu? I want you to go. That's all. For lies, Stu. I'm sorry you think that. I suppose it's easier than facing the truth. Tell me the truth and I'll face it. I'm tired of you hanging on to me. I'm tired of you telling me you it's all right of those nightmares. I'm tired of pretending you're funny when you have a terrified little boy with a broken heart. I'm tired of grow, you to grow up and act, like, and act like a man. Get out, Joey. When it's the last time I hit you, you never hit me. But well, I feel like hitting you now. Be a real man, Joey. Out, not a pair of fists. Too much. Pack up, Joey. Not, not. What's that? Never mind. No, shoo, 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 shoo. I wasn't going to hit him. You must have thought I was. He pulled away. He slipped back and he exploded. So he exploded. I went to water. I, put, I, pulled, I pulled him out. He was dead. Just like that, he was dead. And they had taken him away. I detected Sergeant Thomas Solaro, Mr. Peters. You didn't push him, did you? No, I didn't push him. What was in the tub was for, was for you. Yeah, I was going to take a bath. Uh, what happened to Stu? The coroner thinks the mechanism was defective. Water doesn't would have caused a short circuit. What the mechanism? The same thing strapped his chest. Chest, a cardiac pacemaker. Don't you know? Didn't I know you wore one? Didn't know what it was. I didn't even know what it is. Long term battery control unit which sends electric shocks vehemently to heart muscle. It maintains the beat, which means normal life for people. Otherwise, would be dead. What would be? Why would that be needed? Why would he need that? He never went. Had any heart trouble? 
Hadn't he been hadn't he been in the hospital recently? No operation, right? no operation had to be performed. Attachment and inserted into Tress's cavity. I know more about the opt- after the autopsy, but I see he'd been operated on the last month. Is it possible? I've been with him every day. Everything he knows, except for a hard week. When he came out here a week ago, he didn't come back home to the motel, I mean. For about a week, where was where was he? I don't know. Ran up to his centre. Said he'd gone to field trip north. He said he ate and slept in a lab. I don't know. I just keep thinking a minute. I wake up and scream. Can't you, can you, can't you talk to him? To can't you talk to him later? Where is he? The centre. What was it? Where it was? Is it? N O C O R O. The Energy Research Commission. N O R C O. I'd like to talk to you later, Mister Peters. Where did you take Stu, Joey? No, I hate this. Someone dies. You thought would be for the, there forever. You just come and take them. You didn't know where. Where is he going? That I can't go to. Your body will be at this county hospital. Autopsy will be formed. Then you can have it. Then you can have any more tree call for your body. Please. I've always found it best. Best miss, and nobody of Tropic Nopa, somebody who's going to have to face it in the morning, fa- facts in the morning, Miss Peters. We hope this is position, position of an, your body's brother's body. Then I would like to see you in my offices about 10. Where's your offices? Police headquarters. Police headquarters? Do all the visual women react guiltily when they hear you are from police headquarters? Are you innocent? I want to ask you about Professor Stuart Peters. Heard he had an accident. He was killed in an accident. Excuse us. He worked here with you. Was he your assistant or were you his? We worked as equals. He was both being, he was past being assistant. Was he operated on here? Yes. Dr. Brock performed surgery. I thought you, I thought you lied to me. Miss Linden. Professor Linden? Why should I have lied? Suppose it wasn't a heart attack. Suppose it was some kind of industrial accident. Some firms like to avoid involvement in this sort, of, that sort of thing. Insurance, by public relations, you know. But it was a heart attack. Yes, you saw that as though you saw that as though you, you say that as you don't don't believe it. Coroner's report was funny, Professor. Coroner's report was had, can never be said to be funny. Two pieces of scar tissue as fresh as tomorrow's morning milk. The operation had been taking place as he came here. No one said it didn't, but he had to undergo a complete physical before he left Kings in New York. Your company insisted. Now we've seen those records, Professor. It's been in be- any better health. You've given him a morning show on television. Oh, that just wasn't on the cards for Professor Stuart Peters. Well, would you deduce from all this, Mr. Laro? Shock or fright probably induced can cause a front heart attack. Well, he's working right beside me when the attack came. Do you suppose I could sh- I could shock or frighten anyone? A point of death? What the work? What kind of work? Would you understand? Probably not. Could I take a look around on my own? No. You must be occupied by someone. I'm not a bad security risk. Well, I personally do not form or enforce security regulations at NOCO. I merely obey them. I been I need higher permission from than me. Mine. Dr. Brox, he's the chief of directors. He's director in chief. I guess I better talk to him then. If you like, Mr. Herrero. Sergeant Herrero? We all like we all like our titles, Professor. Dr. Block, not in the office right now. You find him in the pit. Pit, the energy pit. You call it pit. Are you alright? Of course. Look on, Sergeant. Look upset. What's the matter, Sobs? What is it? I, c- I just can't. I can't. Wait a minute. Was it, what was that detective's name? Slara. It's a Greek name. I don't know it. He said around 10. Yeah, this morning. Brown and size first. The night to get through. We could go for a drive. Get away from me. Gabby, what was the first na- name of your friend of yours? The one who told you to call me. I made it up. Did you really see all the t- my touch shirts? Yeah, I think so. What made you call me? Your legs. Your fine legs. Someone at no- NOCO killed my brother, Gabby. How did you get my number? In the phone book. Can I borrow your car? I drive. No, you just stay here. You're going up there? Size so yes, tight banging. Get out. What did you do? Why did you do that? 
Why did you close the door? Get out. What is this thing? That thing? Where did it come from? It'll kill you. What? What made you do that? Who ordered you to do that? He's killing me for doing this. Professor Brock. You kill me again. Professor Brock ordered you? Now he's gonna. Now he's gonna. He won't make. He won't make you do anything. I'll take you out of here. Don't worry about me. I would just. I already have died once. Just go, go, block. Go? Well, have you seen it, Sergeant? What was it? Where did it come from? It's pure energy, Sergeant. Pure and adulterated and mis- and memorized power. And well, there's a cleaning woman who originally gave it life. Called out of the woodwork. You haven't tried it, destroy it. Why would I want to do that? Even if I could. Are you fond of that? Of it, a scientist learns not to be afraid of things he does not understand. Few members of my staff just try to destroy it. Energy cannot be destroyed. So you said you dis- they just tried to destroy me. No, we didn't. No, we didn't want to destroy you. And you protect ourselves. Simply heart, simple heart operation brought them to reason. One by one, I terrified them to death. One by one, I gave them back their lives. Lives that only what they own. Only as long as I do not cut off the power. It makes their heart break. See, I'm almost, I have total control. What energy force in there? There's that energy force in there. I we could eagerly struck, suck the power out of the pacemaker if, allowed, if I'm allowed to. Are you sane? I wish you were. Insane, well, forgivable block. Not insane. At a word obsessed, think of it. A small, lighter thing like black bowl of dust. Hollowed against the baseboard. Dustless corner. What is it? How where does it come from? Why does it? Why does it suddenly live? When it's fed common energy. Questions like that are very interesting. They deserve to be answered, but not at the cost of human life. The wonderful questions are always answered at the cost of human life. Remember how we wondered by the other bomb? Stay clear, Sergeant. We want to get back, Clabby. Do you? I don't know. I want to make punch in the mouth if I have to. Don't know. I want to make the god let me in. Punch him in the mouth if I have to. But I can't say that's really what I want to do. Can't make decisions, Gabby. That's hard to make. Well, she has gone. We have, to, we have to learn now. I right, wait here. Go ahead. Don't help me. I'm sorry, Steffi groans. Don't want to do that. Is it isn't right to kill? Can't leave him. When it first appeared. It looked as it, it, it looked as if it as it a scientist would curious, frightened even. But he was sure. We were all sure it could be controlled, studied, but our control slipped. Even for a second, it would kill. If it were, if it was loose, it would kill mindlessly, instinctively. So we tried to destroy it, but he wouldn't want. He didn't want it destroyed. He said it was his discovery. He said it was his. He was solved the mystery of it. Every man wants to go, wants to solve one mystery before he dies. He locked it. He locked it. He locked it. No, no, I don't know, know what to suggest. Thanks, no. You can't destroy it with guns. It's too many forms of energy. What? As long as we stay in the dark, we're safe. No hero, no way can we destroy it. We have to control it. Wait a minute. How? Get it back to the pit. How? The pit has its own generators. If we cut off the power everywhere else, it'll go back to the pit. Cut the power in this area. Quick. I'll kill as much as I can from in here. What is it? What is the matter? Taking the power is under control for the moment. Man, the conversation of energy law. Principle which states that energy can change in form, cannot be either created or destroyed. That is true of all energies. The energy of genius, the madness, heart of the atom. So it must be lived with. It must be controlled, channeled for the good, help isolated, held isolated from evil and somehow lived with peaceably. They control you to your television set. To, to you until next week at the same time when the control voice will take you to the outer limits.